What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video we're continuing our series on great architectural extensions for SketchUp. So up till now we've covered extensions that can help us create walls and windows and things like that. Now we're going to check out an extension that help, can help us create roofs. Um, if you're looking for links to this extension or for any of the other extensions that we talk about, I've created a free guide to architectural extensions for SketchUp that has links and descriptions and things that shows you where you can get all of these different extensions. So if you want to get them all, check them all out, make sure you check out the Architecture Extensions Guide at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash Architecture Extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So one of the things that can get a bit complicated inside of SketchUp is when you start getting irregular shapes like this one and you want to create a roof. So a lot of the time what you want to do is you want to create a roof over this whole thing and it's just really kind of complicated and time consuming to do that. So usually what you would do is you would take a roof like this one and you would probably draw whatever the profile is of the roof. So maybe something like this, you'd kind of have to figure out your slope area and all of that and then you'd select this face you'd use the follow me tool and you'd extrude this like this and you can see how what this does is this gives you all these crazy intersections and then you have to go in here right click on this and intersect your faces with model and then start erasing things out to try to get a proper roof and then when you get into the complicated areas like this one sometimes there's geometry that you have to fix and other things like that and just doing it the traditional way can get really time consuming and kind of frustrating and so you can see how I could probably figure this out by coming in here and erasing all of these different edges and kind of fixing things and stuff like that. So you can definitely do things the traditional way, but you can see how it's really time consuming and it can just be kind of a mess. Well, what we can do instead, as I undo through here, is you can use an extension called TIG Roof. And so TIG Roof is a free extension from TIG that allows you to create roofs based on some complex faces. So what you would do is you would take this extension and you would run it and you have a few different kinds of roofs to choose from you can set your slopes and then you would just click OK and it would just create a roof really easily so you can see how creating this roof based on a slope gets super simple when you use this extension and so the same kind of problem happens when you have a complex face like this one um, if you were to come in here and let's say we had kind of a, a roof like this one then you would use the follow me tool to start figuring this out. You'd start running into issues where your circle was because what this does is this comes to a point but then it doesn't know what to do with the extra edges in here. So the traditional way just doesn't work very well with these complex shapes. However, same thing, if I take this extension, run it, and then I add that roof in here you can see how that's going to take that roof and that's going to create that and kind of fill in the blanks in there. And if you don't like the way that this looks, all you have to do is just undo. You can either reduce your slopes or whatever. So I could take this and run this again and you can see how I get a nice easy roof in here just by doing this. And so this extension contains several different kinds of roofs that you can uh, create inside of your models. So for example, um, not only does this have the option for the hipped roof, you can also create a mansard sprocket roof, which is a double sloping roof. And you can set this along with your heights and then click OK and you can create a mansard sprocket roof just like this. So you can set the height of your lower area in here as well as the slope of your upper area. So if you didn't like the way this looked, you could just run this again. And you could set your height of your lower roof to something like two feet and then your upper roof to something else and you could run that again. You can see how that gets in here and that's a little bit shorter. So it figures out all of the math for you, which is great. And so the other thing that this extension can do, so this can create a mansard sprocket roof. It can also come in here and allow you to pick a couple different points and create a gable ended roof. So a roof like this one. So if you wanted to create a gable ended roof, you could definitely do that. Or you can also create a pyramid roof. So a roof that comes to a point just by picking three points as well. 
We'll take a little bit more of a look at the options in a second, but you can see how what that does is that quickly comes in here and that allows you to create a roof that comes to a point. So there's multiple different kinds of roofs you can create inside of your models. And so, those are the kinds of roofs you can create. You can also adjust different things in here. Like for example, let's say I wanted my roof slope to be something like 30 degrees. I could type in 30 degrees or you could do a rise over run. So if you wanted this to be a one to two or something like that, you could type that in here as well or whatever. So if you're going with a higher number that isn't reduced, um, you could go with a nine to 12 or whatever you wanted to put in here. So you can adjust your slope based on degrees or by ratio as well as the size of the eaves and the soffit, meaning how tall the eaves are and how wide out your soffit is going to be with this roof. So you could adjust this so you have a really big soffit, um, like let's say five, yeah, let's go with three feet. So you can adjust that and that'll create a roof with a wider soffit, which we'll look at in a second. Um, there's also an option in here where you can adjust what the fascia and soffit type look like. So um, what this is gonna do is this is gonna adjust if those fascias are straight up and down, and if the soffits are just horizontal, or if they slope a little bit. And I can show you the difference between those as well. And then the last option allows you to set your layer and your materials, which we'll talk about in a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And you can see how I'm able to create this roof that has this three foot overhang and we were able to adjust this to have that 30 degree height really easily. If you don't like it, just go back and run it again. And let's say now we don't want that anymore. Let's say we want this to be a one to two. Let's say we want maybe a 12 inch soffit size. And then let's say we want these to be, um, let's say we wanted your soffits or your uh, fascias to stay vertical and then your soffits to slope. So now if you look at this, what this did is this created a roof with less overhang, and you can see how the fascia, which is this face piece right here, stays straight up and down, and then this slopes. So now your soffits are sloping. So you can adjust how this roof goes on your model really easily. And so let's say that we wanted to create this and we wanted to put some different materials on our roof. This extension can do that for us. So the one thing I wanna note about this is it's helpful to have this material Material applied to something inside of your model. So if you just create a rectangle or something like that and then you apply the roofing material you want to that model, that's gonna make that show up in our drop down list. And then same thing, let's say I wanted like a wood material or something like that for my soffits. So let's say we wanted the wood veneer one material on there. You'd wanna go ahead and drop that into your model so it shows up on the list. But now if I select this face, and let's say for this one, we wanted to create the mansard sprocket roof. And let's say this time we wanted to apply our different layers and materials. So I would click on yes. And so what that would do is that would create my roof and then would also give me options in here to set the layer that this is on, as well as the different surfaces that are going to be on this roof. So in this particular situation, I would go down and look for my roofing shingles asphalt, which I'd already added in here. And then for my fascias, if I wanted this to be the wood material, I'd just go to wood veneer 01. And then now if I click okay, what that's gonna do is that's gonna create my roof with that material applied to it. It's gonna create my fascia with this wood material applied to it. And then it's gonna create my soffit underneath with the other material that I had selected there applied to it as well. So you can see how by doing this, it gets really easy to create your roofs, especially with these complex faces. And so the other thing I wanna talk about really quick is let's say that you wanted to have like a hipped roof on the top of this, but then you wanted a couple different windows or something like that coming off of here. Well, you'd really need to combine two different kinds of roofs. And so for a roof like this one, one thing you might wanna be careful about is you can see how even though I have this drawn like this, um, for whatever reason, if I push pull this up, you can see how these faces have kind of been merged together in here. You're getting these extra lines in here. Well, if I create a roof right here, I may get an error message just because what's happened is this edge has gotten divided up into multiple pieces. It might be easier in this situation to just group this and then go in here and delete out your edge and then redraw over this just because then this edge over here doesn't get split up by all of these extra intersections. Well, then you can come in here and you can create your hip roof on this side like this. 
And so now what you would you do is you would come in here, pick roof, and you would add a gable ended roof. And then you would just set a point here, a point here, and then just click on this back point right here. And what that would do is that would create a roof that intersects with this one right here. So you can adjust you can adjust your different materials that are in here. You can adjust the color of the gable and then click OK. So you can see how adding that in there was pretty easy. And I do want to note that sometimes that can act, act a little bit twitchy depending on the points that you select. So for example, if I come in here and do the exact same thing over here, so one point, two point, three points, if I do it in that direction, it's going to, for whatever reason, create my roof coming out this way. But if I do it the other way, this point, this point to this point, then it works fine and it does exactly what we want. So you may have to play around with that a little bit in complex, uh, in complex situations like this one. And then the other thing that's nice about this is if you create a roof or if you create a building with walls like this one, it really doesn't matter because your roof, um, your roof is based on a face. So even if I have this in here with uh, like interior walls and other things like that, so let's say I had some different interior walls. So what you would do in this situation is you would just put all of that in a group and then you could just draw a rectangle over top of this like this. And you could easily create a roof in here while still maintaining that interior stuff. And because this puts that on that roof layer, you can also turn that off to get back to it whenever you want to. So while this is a simple extension, I find it super helpful for creating roofs that are uh, more complex than just like a simple rectangle or something like that. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this extension. Let me know if you've tried it, what you'd like to see in the extension. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you want to download this extension, make sure you check out the architecture extensions guide. The link to this extension is in that guide. And you can download that at the sketchupessentials.com slash architecture extensions. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.